Good morning, church. Grace and peace to you, and welcome to Vineyard Church Glendora's online service. My name is Abigail Gaines, and I'm the lead pastor, and I want you to know that my prayer for us this morning has been that as we gather in this unique online way, that we would receive spiritual unity that I know is a gift of the Holy Spirit to the church, no matter where we are at, all across this nation this morning and as we receive spiritual unity that we would receive the blessing of hope and love and joy and peace you know Psalm 121 says I lift my eyes up to the mountains from where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord maker of heaven and earth you know that this is true for every single one of us this morning, no matter where we are, that we can receive this spiritual blessing in unity this morning, that God is our helper. If you live um, in the San Gabriel Valley as I do, I encourage you today, take a step outside. Look up to the mountains and be reminded that no matter what mountain you might be facing right now in your life, no matter what hill you feel like you need to climb, that God is your perfect helper in your present moment. If you are joining us for the first time this morning, welcome. We'd love to get to know you better. We encourage you contact the church through email or text us and someone will return to you promptly. We have lots of ways to get connected throughout the week through our online Zoom hangouts. Uh, we have gatherings for children, youth, adults. We have small groups and story tables happening. If you'd like to know more about this, again, reach out to the church and we will have somebody from our hospitality ministry contact you shortly. I'm going to continue to encourage our church to continue to give generously, especially in a time like this, especially in a time where the needs are increasing, where they're growing within our community, within our world. Now is the time that we must reveal to all around us that God is so generous that God wants to respond abundantly with mercy and with love and with grace. And the church is a primary way that God has an opportunity to do that. So please continue to give uh, generously, generously during this season. Hey, we have a great service planned for you today. We're gonna take some time to worship through music together. I encourage you stand up in your room and sing as loud as you can. Um, we're going to be hearing from our children's director and ministry director, a word of encouragement for our children and youth. And also we will be continuing our series in the book of Mark this morning. So I'm excited about what God's gonna do in and through us. Will you pray with me as we continue our time together this morning? Lord of heaven and earth, may we be faithful to receive all that you have for us in this time, in this space, knowing that God, you are our present helper in our time of need. May we respond faithfully to what it is that your spirit wants to say and do in us. So God, mold us, fill us, and use us. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our living room. And wherever you are right now, i just like to encourage you just to feel free to express your worship to Jesus. If it, you want to posture yourself and just, you know, lifting up your hands, I guess that's totally okay because uh, nobody's in your room or if you're in your couch. i just like to invite you to, um, to just be expressive in your worship this morning. We're just going to uh, go ahead and, and jump in and, and, and worship. So come along and join us. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Worthy of every song we could ever sing 
Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one. Who could ever say Worthy of every breath We could ever breathe we we'll live for you Oh, we'll live for you You are holy There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes song we could ever sing. Worthy God, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We'll live for you, oh Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you. You are holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my my life upon the Lord, and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in you. Build my life upon
God, we will not be shaken, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for just being here and just meeting us here, Lord God. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Jesus. Go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? It's God. I'm not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping shadow, in my weakness, your glory.
meet us here, oh. Put our trust in you. Put our hope in You want to help me find Ash for Sunday school? Amor's going to help us too. Let's go. Let's look in here first. See if she's over here. Maybe somewhere over here. I don't see her. Hmm. Maybe over here. You saw her? Can you point? <gasps> Thanks, guys. Hey, Ash, it's time for Sunday school. <gasps> hey, is it time for Sunday school already? It is. Well, let's get started. Amor, looks like you'll be joining us. That's awesome. Let's Good go. morning, Vineyard kiddos, and welcome to Sunday School. You're in for a special treat today. We're going to be talking about loving God and loving your neighbor. We're going to have a special guest speak to you, one of my family friends, a kiddo just like you. Her name is Belle Yu, and she's in our neighborhood, and her mom was so kind as to record a video. She's going to give you guys some awesome ideas on how to spend some time at home and also say a special prayer for us. Let's go to the clip. Hi, what I've been doing over these few days is I've been playing with my brother, cooking, dancing, a lot of dancing actually, math a bit, and um, I think a bit of chores and cleaning, um, a lot of playing outside, and yeah, that's pretty much what I've been doing every single day now for my routine, um, hanging out with my mom and for those of you out there who are sick and who have the virus a bit and who are coughing and everything may god bless you and be with you because in our hearts we know he loves us very much amen welcome back wasn't that just awesome that prayer blessed me so very much you guys, we're so proud of you and the way that you are coping with all the challenges you might be facing. You guys are awesome and we're here for you. God is with you, you are loved, and you are not alone. Thank you guys for watching today's online Sunday School. We love you and we'll see you next week. Hey guys, my name is Alex and I am the youth director here at Vineyard Church Glendora. And today we are going to talk about what it means to actually love God and love others. Jesus knew that he was going to leave the earth soon. And so he tells his disciples, I'm going to give you a commandment. Love each other the same way that I have loved you. That's wild. I mean, that's like a high standard, right? How do we love each other the same way Jesus did? With all the miracles, all the ways that he just poured out his heart to everybody around him all the time. How are we even capable of doing that? But the cool thing is that the Bible says that we are equipped with every single good work to do God's will. And so Jesus uses this word um, friend or neighbor and the Aramaic actually translation of that word friend, it means one who is close to you. And I thought that was really amazing because God isn't saying just, just love that, you know, that person across the world, go on a mission trip and go across the world to love somebody. He's actually saying, love the one who's closest to you. Right now, if you reached out your arms and, and stretched them out next to you as you're watching this, you're probably gonna hit somebody, right? You're probably gonna touch somebody that's sitting next to you. There's somebody close to you right now, in the same room at least, and God is saying, how are you loving that person? Because the way that you love them is going to be showing love to me. John Wimber, who started the vineyard, when he talked about the spiritual gifts, he didn't think of each person having one spiritual gift, but he saw it as a belt. And on this belt, you have every single thing you need, kind of like a worker's belt who has like a hammer or you know a screwdriver, different things inside the belt. 
and you have to use different tools for different tasks, right? And that's the way that John Wimber saw it. He said, um, if there's somebody who comes up to you who needs healing, he believed that God, through the Holy Spirit within you, since the Holy Spirit is inside of you, you have, all, you have access to all the gifts. When you contact somebody who needs healing, you could pray for healing. And God wants to move. He wants to bring healing to that person through us. Or maybe there's somebody who's super angry and you need kindness in that moment and God wants to supply you kindness. And so that's how we saw the gifts. And I think it's a great way to think of how we can love somebody. So the Holy Spirit has given you everything that you need to show love to the person in front of you. And you might be thinking, God, I don't have that strength. Well, it's because it doesn't come from you, it comes from God. And in that moment, you could cry out to God and say, God, give me patience, give me um, the gift of healing, give me a prophetic, encouraging word for this person. How could I love the person in front of me? How would they, if I were in their situation, how would I want to be treated? I'm excited to hear about the creative ways that you guys think of to love those around you. Love you guys so much and hope you have a great week. Please join me this morning for a reading of God's Word. Our teaching today is from Mark 12, 28 through 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which one is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understandings, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then, no one dared ask him any more questions. Well, hey friends, good to be with you. Coming to you this morning on location at our ministry center, a very quiet building where I think I'm the only one here and uh, it's not usually like this. Usually there's pizza place booming and classic coffee, tons of people and people working out next door, but it uh, seems like it's just me here. But it's good to be with you today, and I hope you've had a good week. Our prayers continue to go out to all of you, and we are especially praying for those of you still working and going out and serving and uh, keeping this whole thing running as it were. Also, for those of you who are now working from home, I know many of you a couple weeks ago had to make a massive pivot and kind of overnight set up the home office or the home classroom as it were. And dare I say, we are all now very, very familiar with Zoom, otherwise known as the stock we wish we had bought this time last year. But I digress. Um, back in January, we started a series in 2020 that was intended to take us up to and right through Easter, and we are still on track for that. And so I'm going to be journeying with you today again through the Gospel of Mark. You know, each journey has its own share of twists and turns, does it not? And who would have predicted back in January this twist and this turn that we have been facing? And so as we open the Word of God today and as we study together, uh, my hope and my prayer is to simply bring a fresh, albeit I think a challenging uh, word today, rooted in the good news of Jesus Christ. This Jesus who said from the very beginning that he had come to bring nothing short of the good news of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, breaking into our space and our time here and now. And I think if ever there was a time in our history when we needed to be reminded of that, to press in to that good news of, of heaven invading earth, um, I think that time is now. Because we're sitting in a season and we're sitting at a time in human history when doesn't it feel like something else has invaded earth? That there's been something that really is the antith antithesis to heaven in many ways, that has invaded our planet, and, and, and we feel the tension, don't we? Um, it's in the air. It's in the air when you stand 
in line behind strategically marked pieces of tape at your local grocery store. If you've been selected as the one to go out and do the shopping, um, I think it's in the air when you talk to your neighbors perhaps, and you just kind of feel this tension. And so there's this paradox and there's this tension as followers of Jesus that we find ourselves living in today. And I just want to try to kind of name that for a few minutes. I want to kind of uh, try to, to give some, some language to that paradox that we find ourselves living in. I heard someone this week describe it as kind of like we're living in between or we're living in the tension of two stories. Let me name both of those stories. The first story is this very real story, and it's a global story going on right now, which is this pandemic. It's COVID. It's the COVID-19 story, and it's the anxiety and the suffering that that story is causing. Um, I, don't, I think we can all agree that there is nothing in our lifetime that has consumed the entire planet quite like this. Nothing that has created such universal uh, solidarity that has um, created these, uh, or just had such broad global ramifications. As, and so there is that very real story that we're all living in. But, but I want to remind us this, mor this morning that, that it's not the only story that we're living in. And it's not the only real story that has broad, global reaching ramifications. I think we need to be continually reminded of that in this season. There's this second story going on. You know, Jesus, Jesus continually talked about that second story in the midst of a story that created a lot of tension and a story that created a lot of suffering and a lot of anxiety. Uh, Jesus could have spent all his time while he was here talking about this viral infection that had invaded Palestine called Rome. And, and he could have talked about how it was continually beating people down and isolating individuals and separating uh, families and ruining local economies and isolating communities and marginalizing the poor. But what we find in the Gospels is that what Jesus does instead, and his teaching centered around another story. It did not disregard that first story. It held that intention, but he continually talked about another story, which was the good news story of the kingdom of God, of heaven invading earth, of God coming near to humankind right in the midst of that other story. And I believe that this is the great paradox and the tension that we now find ourselves living in as followers of Jesus. And so the question for us becomes, how do we live faithful to that second story? How do we live faithful to the story of the good news of the kingdom of God breaking in here and now in the midst of that other story? Holding those two stories in tension today, I want to turn our attention to the Gospel of Mark chapter 12. You know, back when we were sitting together in a circle and doing teachings like these live in a circle and eating bagels and donuts and hard boiled eggs and sipping coffee, uh, back then I, I mentioned when we were studying Mark chapter eight that, that Mark eight, we kind of turn a corner. And, and in Mark eight, Jesus begins this journey, this resolute, determined journey to Jerusalem. He predicts his death and his su own suffering at the hands of Rome along the way, no less than three times uh, before he finally arrives in Jerusalem in, in Mark chapter 11. And in Mark chapter 11, when Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, uh, his followers who are expecting a conquering Messiah uh, in, in the line of David, his followers line the streets of Jerusalem and they wave palm branches and they shout this Hebrew word, Hosanna, which quite literally means save or save us because they see Jesus as the one who's going to save them uh, from imperial Rome, much like David had saved the Israelites thousand plus years before from the Philistines. This is a Sunday. Palm Sunday. And yet five days later, there will be this sudden and this rather unexpected thing happen, this change. And where it seems all this is going on a Sunday, 
which is to winning and which is to defeating Rome and conquering, by Friday, it'll end with this unexpected and humiliating defeat at the hands of Rome. Now, if you've been reading along in Mark's gospel, you know that throughout the gospel, Jesus is consistently questioned by many of the religious leaders of his day. And he's questioned about everything from why does he disregard the, the Sabbath to why do his disciples eat with unclean hands to should we pay taxes to Caesar? The list goes on and on. And what we're going to read today and what you've already heard Liliana read for us is the final question that Jesus is asked by one of the religious leaders before he goes to the cross. And it's a positive, really a positive question in, in chapter 12, verse 28, where it says one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. And noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The final question comes from this teacher of the law, the Torah, the Jewish Torah. And, and it's a question about the Torah. This is like the equivalent of perhaps someone who works in IT coming to you and asking you a question about some technical computer question or your mechanic asking you a question about fixing your car. This Torah expert comes to Jesus with a question about wanting to know his opinion on the Torah. And his question is about which of the commandments is the most important. Now, I think when we hear the word commandments, most of our minds immediately go to Exodus 20 and the 10 that Moses was given on Sinai. But if you read the Torah, if you read Genesis through Deuteronomy, there's actually 613 different commandments. And so what this Torah teacher is act asking Jesus goes far beyond just 10 of them. He's saying of the 613, what's the most important one? And Jesus' answer in verse 29, he says, The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I've never noticed something until this week studying this. But I liken it to what I'm getting on my phone right now, which is a lot of uh, advertisements from Uber Eats and Grubhub, which are, are telling me that I can get a two for one, that, I, that if I buy one meal, I'll get the second meal free. And so essentially I'm paying for one and getting two things. And, and, and I've never noticed until this week that that's exactly what Jesus gives this teacher of the law. He gives him a two for one because the teacher of the law asks, what is the one greatest commandment? And did you notice Jesus actually gives him two? The first thing, he does is he quotes this famous Jewish prayer found in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 5. It's called the Shema. And he says that the greatest thing we could do as humans is to love God with our entire beings, our will, our thoughts, our bodies, essentially to love as Christ himself loves. And then Jesus, without skipping a beat, he adds the second thing. And he immediately connects loving God to loving our neighbor or loving others. He quotes Leviticus 19, 18, to love your neighbor as yourselves. And I think he does that because those two commandments, those two ideas, loving God and loving people are forever inseparable. Why? Because God loves people his will, his thoughts, God's agenda from the, from the very beginning, his first and foremost agenda is in fact people. And so it stands to reason that if we love God with our entire being, this will quite naturally lend itself to loving what God loves. And we will quite naturally find ourselves loving people loving our families, loving our brothers and sisters, our spouses, our roommates, our friends, and yes, our neighbors, those we live around in all sorts of new and unique and challenging ways. And here's the thing. When we embrace this 
as the greatest thing we could give our lives to. Loving God and loving people, loving others, what ends up happening is that we experience here and now the nearness and the presence and the reality of the kingdom of God. Heaven invades earth here and now. I want to propose that in these days that we find ourselves living in, these days where perhaps we feel like we've been invaded by a, a viral enemy that is threatening our, our, our safety and our security and our future, causing mass amounts of anxiety and suffering around the world, nothing has changed. The word Jesus gave that Jewish Torah teacher is the same word Jesus gives us today. That there's nothing more important that we could give our lives to right now than loving God and allowing God's love to pour right through, through us, in us, and to our neighbors and those around us. Abigail and I have been inspired and incredibly moved and encouraged that as a church community, we have seen this outpouring of ways that you're loving each other, supporting each other, supporting us. We've had no less than two of you stop by randomly and just drop us off toilet paper saying we thought you could need it. Thank you. And in a time of global crisis that, that, that threatens to define our generation, these are the greatest things we could be about. And it turns out they're kind of one and the same. Because Jesus ends that section in 31 by saying, there is no commandment singular greater than these, plural. To follow Jesus and to be faithful to that second story in the midst of the first, to follow Jesus all the way to the cross, is to give our lives to loving him and to loving what he loves which is to love and to continue to sacrifice for others. I was reading one of my commentaries this week. I don't have a lot of them because I can't go to the library. But I was reading one of my favorite theologians, Tom Wright, N.T. Wright, um, in England. And he, and he wrote something way back in 2004 about this passage, but it's as applicable in our day as it was perhaps back then. I want to read that to you as we kind of draw this teaching to a close. He writes this, This, this teaching of Jesus, comes as a considerable challenge to all contemporary Christians. Would anyone looking at us, our churches, our lives, the societies that claim in some sense to be Christian, ever have guessed? that the man we claim to follow saw his followers as being people like this. Or to put it another way, when the crisis comes, what remains solid in your life and your community? Wholehearted love of God and neighbor or the mad scramble of everyone trying to save their own skins? Friends, the temptation when we face scarcity and a threat to our way of life and stress like we've never seen. The temptation is to become self-protective, to turn inward. But Jesus consistently calls us to, in, that, in the midst of that tension, to turn outward. He calls us outward in love to others. And in doing so, to demonstrate the nearness and the story of the kingdom of God invading earth. This, this good news story that will always triumph over every other invading enemy that threatens to steal, kill, or destroy. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. This is the word of God to us today. This is something solid that we can stand on when all else around us may feel a little shaky. And now I want to turn to Abigail, who's going to share some reflections, some real practical ways that we can live this out as a community and then as we, and, and ways that we can respond to this word this morning. God bless you. I hope to see you again real soon. Grace and peace. Thank you, Jacob, for that encouraging word. 
You know, I'm reminded of a moment that one of my children was facing a handful of years ago in which they were just really struggling to feel loved. They were really struggling to feel connected. And no matter how hard I tried in that moment, no matter how many words I used to try to encourage them, everything just seemed to fall flat. If anything, the more I, I tried to encourage them in that moment, the more disconnected I, I feel like we became. And I remember that night laying awake in bed and I was just so worried. I was concerned for them and I was crying out to God and I was, I was asking God all of these questions like, God, is, is there something I could have said or done differently? You know, is there another parenting book I, I should be reading that would help me understand them better? Um, um, God, you know, am I causing these feelings of disconnect in them? God, what do you want me to know? I was crying out to God. And in that moment of all of my worry and all of my confusion, the Holy Spirit broke in. And as clear as day as I, I heard, love them the way that I love you. And then I heard 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, which says, We love because he first loved us. And so what God was saying to me in that moment was, was love your child first, get to them first, pursue them first, restore them first, but love them the way that I have loved and love you, which is first. I get to you first. You know, earlier in uh, 1 John, in that chapter, in uh, 4 verse 11, uh, John writes, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. You know, as we are loved by God, we are then called, we are commissioned to go out and to love others. And what John tells us is that this love will actually be a way in which those around us see and experience and connect to the great love of God. You know, it was my own experience of God's love, God loving and pursuing me first, that compelled me to love God in return, that compelled me to connect with the true and living God. So my question to you this morning is, is who can you love first today? Is there somebody that you need to pursue first, that you need to reach out to first? You know, we are in a season in which we are being called upon to retreat, to distance, to, to disconnect, right? But my question is, is, but who can you pursue during this time? Who can you be seeking out? How can you be seeking out? Maybe it's seeking somebody out. Maybe it's a text or, or maybe it's picking up the phone and calling somebody or arranging for Uber Eats to drop off a meal or I don't know, setting up a Zoom hangout with somebody. But how does God want you to pursue somebody first? Is there somebody in your life that just simply needs to know that God is loving them right now, that God is generous to them, that God is kind, and they need to know that before they ask for it, right? You know, in the year 252 AD, this terrible plague hit northern Africa in the city of Carthage. And the city we, it was reported that time as just being filled with anxiety, filled with panic, filled with worry, not much uh, unlike where we find ourselves and our communities find themselves uh, currently, right? But there was this Christian leader at the time, Cyprian, and he called upon the Christians in that community, in that city at that time, to fan out and to go out into the town and to give to all according to their need. The Christians were called upon to fan out, to be present, to give to all according to their need. Later, the philosopher and theologian Dionysius made this observation that the followers of Jesus during that time were very distinct. 
And what made them distinct was that they ran in when the world ran out. You know, this week, may we find ourselves running in when maybe those around us are running out. And as we yield our lives to the love of God that pursues us first, may we then be faithful to pursue the world around us with that same love and grace and mercy that we have received. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Grace and peace to you until we meet again.